The Atlanta Braves stumble in the final two games in Chicago, continuing their up and down play post All Star break. But Hurston Waldrop makes his professional's debut and looks really good. We'll talk about that on today's Miners Monday episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at bravestoday.com. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at lockdown underscore braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Enjoyed engaging with you over the weekend during that Cub series, which was so frustrating, and we'll get into on today's episode. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube as well. Up over 6,500 subscribers on YouTube now, so thank you so much for the support there. If you're watching this video and you want to support the episode or this podcast, make sure you hit that like button as it does do that. Thank you so much to all our everydayers out there making Lockdown Braves your first listen up each and every day. Thank you so much for those who continue to let me know down in the comments section on YouTube. Thank you so much. On today's podcast, we'll recap the weekend. A rough weekend for the Braves. Started off great, fantastic, with Max Fried on the mound. Uh, But then it pretty much was downhill from that, at least from a pitching standpoint. So we'll discuss all that. But it is our Miners Monday episode. We got a lot of good to get to there as Hurston Waldrop made his professional debut. Had a lot of other good pitching performances as well, including one from Owen Murphy. So really good week down on the farm for the Braves. A lot of standout performances there that I want to talk about. But let's jump into that weekend series in Chicago, a series loss at Wrigley Field. A couple of things here. One, the Chicago Cubs, they are have been one of the best teams in baseball since the All-Star break. I think they're tied for the best record in baseball since the All-Star break. Their offense has been playing at another level. And I think you saw it this weekend. It was a lot of competitive, grinded out type of at-bats. I mean, a lot of credit to them in this series. I thought they did a great job. Another thing, and this is just an excuse, I hate playing at Wrigley Field. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just when the Braves play there, but it's always windy. You're never really sure which way the wind's going to be blowing. It seems to always either be rainy or freezing cold when we go there. Again, it has you know little to effect on the outcome. Both teams had to play in that type of weather. I just It seems like that's always the case when we go to Wrigley, and it was the case this weekend. You had a lot of rain, especially in the last two games of that series. And you got the Dansby Swanson effect, and I'm going to give some biased or get rather unbiased, I don't know how you want to phrase it here, fan opinion. I loved Dansby Swanson, and I'm using past tense here, and I'll tell you why in a second. I loved Dansby Swanson when he was with the Braves, absolutely. Even before he had his breakout seasons, I was always one of the biggest supporters of Dansby. said, I hope he's the future shortstop of the Braves. I love his intangibles, what he brings off the field. He just has that winner type mentality to him you could see it you know again I I follow college baseball closely I loved him at Vanderbilt what he did there leading them to a a national champ or a world series championship college world series championship helps lead the Braves to a world series championship he just he has that in him that fighter's mentality that winner's type of mentality that you love he wasn't the most talented player on the Braves look if he were on the Braves now he'd probably be the sixth seventh most talented player on this team but he just still has those intangibles. And that's why even before he had his breakout season last year and even before that was showing signs of it, I was always a big supporter of Dansby. Loved him, wanted to be him, wanted him to be a Brave for a long time. That being said, I don't know why. I just cannot stand the guy now. Uh, it's, some of it's because of the comments that he made when he signed with the Cubs and all of that, but it's just, I don't know, something about him now. He just seems smug. Maybe it's how players – teams or fans viewed him on the other side. I don't know. I want him. I want to beat him so bad. And it just really hurt me that the Braves didn't. And that he had some big hits in this series, but it's just kind of crazy to me and my, my personal fandom of the guy. And look, I'm, I'm not necessarily a media member here. I'm a fan just like you and my feelings on him have completely flipped since he was with the Braves. Now, you know, I still have a lot of love for Freddie Freeman. It's a very different situation. These are not the same. A lot of people try to make this the same, and it's not the same. Danley Swanson got his bag. I, as much as I wanted the Braves to get him back, I was all on board not giving him $170 million 
probably wouldn't have even gone as high as 130 million, which some speculate might have gotten it done and he would have taken less to be in Atlanta. It really has more so to do with the way that he's kind of handled things after he left Atlanta. Some of the comments he made about Atlanta fans, just, you know, be happy for where you are. You know, I understand, you know, that's your team, that's your city now, but you know, don't say anything that's going to slight your old fan base. That, that to me just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So all of that to say, I'm not the biggest huge, I'm not the biggest Dansby Swanson supporter even anymore. So that made this series loss sting a little bit more for me. Cubs just wanted it more. I mean, you get down to it. Braves made some mistakes, which we'll get into, but Cubs just wanted it more. And they're playing for something, you know. They're obviously they're tr- they're they're behind in their division. They're trying to play to get into postseason position. The Braves are already there. I mean, they have a double digit lead in in the NL East right now. So. I think maybe that plays into it a little bit. Braves maybe not quite as focused. Again, especially you see some of the the bad mistakes they made this weekend, but you could tell the Cubs were into it. You saw them get that final out. You know, I tweeted they they almost reacted like they won the World Series winning these games, but that's what this is to them. They are in a very tight pennant race now with the Brewers and the Reds. These are very important games to them, and they certainly played like it in this series while the Braves did not. And that's kind of where I want to start where the Braves over the weekend is just some sloppy play. And it's really been this way coming out of the break. It's been, you know, this up and down play for the Braves. And really the games they've won, a lot of the time it's been because the offense has bailed them out and kind of is covering up a lot of these mistakes. This past weekend, I mean, it was it was mainly base running. Um, some bad base running decisions. You had one by Eddie Rosario. I don't know what he was thinking. You had a bad sin by Ron Washington. I'm assuming it was a, a sin by Ron Washington. I haven't technically seen if he sent Acuna or not on that play, but no reason to do that with less than two outs there. So that was a bad decision. You had Acuna, another bad base running mistake earlier. You had a, a bloop that dropped in and he kind of got caught up and then didn't slide at second. So uh, at least three bad base running mistakes on the weekend that cost the Braves run and potentially some big innings that could have flipped these games. You had a big error by, by Matt Olson in the Saturday game that really hurt Bryce Elder, who was struggling in that first inning. And then the walks by Elder, two walks to start the game. Charlie Morton with the walks that hit batters. The one thing, and I think this was A. Gonzalez, I heard say this on Twitter, but the one good thing about all this is these are all mistakes that can be fixed. We've talked about the defensive miscues for the Braves and, and you know, got the, the error by Olsen, but really that was kind of it defensively. Maybe there was a ball that Eddie Rosario could have got to that dropped in in front of him. But for the most part, the errors that really hurt the Braves over the weekend were base running and walks. And those are things that can be corrected. So those don't concern me quite as much as the errors do in the bad play defensively. Walks and base running, those can all be fixed. But those are bad, and specifically the base running errors really hurt the Braves this weekend and held them back from winning the series. Starting pitching wasn't great. I mentioned Max Freed, and man, was it a joyous Friday. And this series got off to a great start. You had Max Freed coming back, dominating six shutout innings, Felt like he could have gone complete game. He looked just like the Max Freed that we saw at the beginning of the year before he got injured. If that Max Freed returns, and that's who we're getting, and you got Spencer Strider, you get him to avoid those home runs and those big innings, then you're looking at, I think, still one of the most dangerous one-two punches in a starting rotation in all of baseball. After that, it becomes a little bit sketchy right now because Charlie Morton is not able to find that consistency. First two innings and the game on Sunday looked really good. Looked like Charlie Morton was dialed in and then all of a sudden just loses it. You know, the Braves get him a couple runs. He comes right back and gives them back to the Cubs. It's just that inconsistency from Charlie Morton. The stuff is still in there. I'm going to continue to say that the stuff is still in there for him to be good. He just cannot find it consistently and you can't trust that. But Look, like it or love it, I still think he's your number three starter in a postseason rotation. I know we're still two months away from that, but again, he has to step up. Nobody else is coming in to save the day at this point. The trade deadline is gone. There's no free agents out there. Charlie Morton's got to step up. He's got to be that guy. And again, I still believe the potential is in there. It's just the inconsistencies from him have been highly frustrating last year and this season as well. And then Bryce Elder, you knew there'd be some regression. Look, I said when Bryce Elder came up, I loved him, and I thought he could be in a big league rotation for a long time as a fourth or fifth starter. After what he did at the beginning of the year, maybe expectations were raised on him a little bit, but I think those need to be brought back down to earth and know that he is a fourth or fifth starter. Now, he's been pitching worse than that 
over since the all-star break, you know, over his last four or five starts, but I still think he's going to be okay. It was a tight zone on Saturday. He was just missing. He couldn't figure out the strike zone early on. That really hurt him. You had the air. He kind of settled in after that, but Again, I don't completely blame him for that game on Saturday. It was also wet conditions. Maybe had some trouble gripping the baseball. I think he'll be fine, but I think you do need to lower your expectations. He's a fourth or fifth starter, and at this point, I don't really know if he gets a postseason start. I think a lot of that depends on how Kyle Wright comes back and how healthy he is. But you need at least one of them to step up, either Elder or Morton. Again, I think it more so needs to be Morton just because of his dominant type stuff, if he can be consistent with it. And then you got to hope Kyle Wright can come back and be healthy. I've been, you know, I've said all along, I don't put much stock in that happening. But the rotation is what it is. Nobody else is coming in at this point. You feel pretty good about Strider and Freed at the top. You need Morton to step up in that third spot, or you really need to hope that Kyle Wright comes back and is healthy and looks like the Kyle Wright we saw last year. Now, despite all that, offense is good. I mean, they continue to do what they've done all year long. Yes, they had opportunities in these games to do more damage. That bases loaded situation you had in Sunday's game, they hit Acuna, which is probably the smartest decision the Cubs made all weekend with the way that he was going. And then Ozzy strikes out and Riley strikes out. That can happen. There were opportunities in this weekend for the offense to do more, but this these losses are not on the offense. The offense continues to do their job and put up big numbers. Pitching staff's got to figure it out. Talked about Acuna. His last four games, this is just stupid, 11 hits, two doubles, a triple, and a home run in his last four games, 11 hits. He had three straight three-hit games. He had a two-hit game on Sunday. Somehow he only scored twice in this weekend series. Two of those are base running mistakes. I said that you know Washington sent him or either Ronald sent himself on the ball, hit the right field with just one out, and then him getting hung up between first and second base on a bloop hit by Ozzy Albies. Cost him from maybe scoring a couple more runs, but he gets on base nine times in a series. He needs to score more than two times. Olsen continues to crush the baseball. A couple of two-run homers on the weekend. Six runs batted in in the series. He now has 39 home runs and 97 RBI on the season. Second most RBIs in the National League belongs to Freddie Freeman with 80. And Matt Olson has 97, just to show you how good he's been. What I love is in that game on Sunday, too, he just shot the ball through the hole the other way for an easy RBI as well. So he's got it all going right now, Matt Olson. I mean, he's getting pitched around. I mean, he's he's getting Barry Bonds-type treatment up there, Shohei Otani-type treatment with just the way that he is going right now. So that's truly fun to watch. You feel like he's going to do something special every time up there. But still, not a great weekend. Braves lose the series. Good things offensively, good things on the pitching side with Max Free coming back. But I think right now, one of the concerns for the Braves, got to clean up the base running. That was huge, cost them big time in that series. And Morton, Elder, somebody's got to step up behind Freed and Strider in this rotation. All right, next we'll get into our Miners Monday segment where we got some more good pitching performances that maybe they'll be coming along soon to help things out. We'll discuss that next. At one time or another, we all need a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you cash when you need a hand between paychecks and can help you build credit by settling uh, by settling extra cash advances on time. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. Extra cash gives you more money to buy groceries, fill your tank, finally get your car repaired, catch up on your bills, get those big tickets for the Braves game. Download Dave today or at dave.com slash MLB. That's dave.com slash MLB. You can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. For item for terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. One more time, go to dave.com slash MLB and get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. For terms, visit dave.com slash legal. Braves will begin a four-game series against the Pirates on Monday night at 7.05 Eastern as they look to get back on track. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. All right, jumping into our Miners Monday segment here. We'll go through our top prospects first. A.J. smith Shaver did not pitch this last week. Hasn't pitched since July 30th. 
He's only thrown 45 and a third innings this year uh, through 68.2 innings last year. So I don't know what they're holding him back. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I need to see him get some more innings. Again, I've said all along, I think maybe he gets a shot in the Braves bullpen at some point this year. So uh, we'll see what happens there. And I apologize. Those were just his minor league innings pitched. He has pitched uh, 60 eight innings if my math is correct total this season so he's about where he was last year in terms of innings pitch so i would imagine they want to push push him 20 you know 20 beyond that is typically what you try to do for a young pitcher like that maybe get him up to 100 innings so maybe they are trying to manage that a little bit this year but i still think he could play a role in the bullpen down the stretch look if morton and elder don't get it together maybe he gets another shot in the rotation but uh, we'll see what this what the plan is for aj smith shawver going forward owen murphy this past week five innings three hits one walk one earned and nine strikeouts career high for him there so good to see him racking up those strikeouts kind of get going it's been a little up and down for owen murphy here lately as well, Braden Shoemake, five for 18, a double, a triple, five runs batted in, a walk, five strikeouts, and two stolen bases. I think, I think Braden Shoemake is what he is at this point, and I think he is what I originally thought he was utility bench player who can play, you know, several different positions, but the bats just clearly not there. What we saw in spring training is not what we've seen throughout the course of this season. 25 become a decision time on, on Braden Shoemake again. I think he could be a fine utility player bench player and maybe that's what he's going to be for the Braves in the future or maybe he gets traded this offseason but the bat unfortunately is just not there for him Spencer Schwellenbach still listed on the seven day IL for Rome Darius Vines five and a third innings four hits three walks no earned five strikeouts with Gwinnett this last week Ambioris Tavares one for 20 this past week two walks nine strikeouts and a stolen base Dylan Dodd back at Gwinnett, three innings, five hits, two walks, three earned, one strikeout. I almost wish they would have brought him along a little bit slower. Maybe even demote him to double A if you have to. You got to do something here to get Dylan Dodd back on track. It's been such a rough season for him. I was hoping kind of this little injury timeout that he had would serve as somewhat of a reset. Looked really good at FCL in his first rehab appearance. Then they move him straight back up to Gwinnett and not as good results there. So I don't know what to say about Dylan Dodd at this point. It's been a a rough year for him overall. Ignacio Alvarez picked up his seven hits this past week, but no extra base hits, no walks. I don't think I've ever seen that for him in a week, and six strikeouts. So a little bit of an unusual week for Ignacio Alvarez. Again, he got his seven hits, all of them singles, but no walks and six strikeouts. Luis Guanipa only played in two games this past week, one for seven. It was a double two walks, and two strikeouts. All right, going through each organizational level, Jesus Aguilar, 6 for 15 this past week, two doubles, three walks. Luke Williams, 4 for 14 with a home run and three walks. Von Grissom, five hits. It was a down week for him. Had a double, but still four walks. So even in a down week, he reached base nine times. Alan Winans, seven innings, four hits, two walks. Gave up one on run on a solo homer and 10 strikeouts. Got to wonder if he's going to get another shot in the Atlanta Braves rotation here soon. Speaking of people getting another shot, Michael Soroka, five innings, four hits, four walks, just one on run and eight strikeouts with those four walks. Highly concerning. Again, for me, with Soroka, it's all about getting that, getting those mechanics down, finding that command of those pitches, the control of those pitches. I think once he does that, he'll come back up, and I think he'll be a solid part of the back end of the rotation, but just can't trust it right now. Four walks, it just can't have that. Got to see that control get a little bit better. Seth Elledge and Grant Holmes both had good relief outings for Gwinnett this past week as well. Now, down in Mississippi, Drew Lugbauer, or Slugbauer as he's known, 9 for 24, a double, 5 home runs, 8 runs batted in, and 4 walks. That's player of the week type stuff. You're probably going to see him on some minor league players of the week list. On the season now, he's slashing 277, 386, 638 slugging percentage, 13 doubles, 29 home runs, and just 64 games played. That's 35 walks and 87 strikeouts he does have a very high uh strikeout percentage his strikeout strikeout percentage is at 35 percent this year that is really high but it's actually down from where it's been in the past but uh again and i'm sorry i said 29 home runs he has 20 home runs on the year now so 
but he's only played in 64 games. He missed a good chunk of time this year. But strikeout percentage of 34.7%. That's actually down from where it was last year at 38.2% at double A. He is 26, a left-handed slugger. Again, big power, but big swing and miss. I, I don't know what the future holds for him. First base, DH, left-handed power hitter. Does he get an opportunity? I, I wouldn't mind seeing them move him up to AAA. I don't know that there's a spot on that roster for him right now. You got Jesus Aguilar there. But uh, – the guy's been crushing this year, and if he can get that strikeout rate down closer to 30, I think you could live with that because he has a big walk rate. I mean, he gets on base. His walk percentage has been over 13% in the last two years. So he gets on base. He hits home runs. Not too different from the first baseman that the Braves have right now. So just wanted to give a little bit of shout-out to Drew Lugbauer because he's somebody I'd never really put on my radar just because it was mostly you know three true outcomes. It has been – you know, home run, strikeout, or walk for him, but he's been a little bit better than that this year with that 277 average. So if that's legit, you know, maybe he does deserve to at least get bumped up to AAA, see what he can do there, and then maybe get an opportunity for the Braves. But good depth there because the Braves haven't really had a lot of first base depth in their organization. But Lugbauer, again, maybe the, the mini version of Matt Olson. Uh, we'll see. Drew Campbell had a good week as well. Eight for 17, a double, two walks, two stolen bases. Cal Conley picked up eight hits. He needed that. He got moved down in the lineup. He's really been struggling. Uh, two doubles, two walks, and three stolen bases for Cal Conley. Scott blew it on the mound. Five innings. He did not blow it on the mound. He was actually really good. Five innings, a hit, a walk, no earned, and five strikeouts. Luis Diavila, six innings, six hits, one walk, no earned, and five strikeouts. Down at Rome, Rome. Maybe another guy at first base depth we're talking about here, David McCabe, eight for 22, a home run, five walks, two stolen bases. On the season now, 93 games for David McCabe, 291, 396, 503, 20 doubles, and 16 home runs. He's getting really close to a 40 extra base hit season with 20 plus doubles and 20 plus home runs. 59 walks and 94 strikeouts. He's cut down his K rate by 5% since being moved up to high A. He has been on a tear. He got off to a little bit of a slow start professionally. You know, last year after being drafted, a lot of high expectations for him coming out of Charlotte, college bat, kind of struggled, wasn't showing that power. Even this year early on, he wasn't, but he has gone on a tear here the last couple of months, and he's made himself one of the better hitting prospects in the Brave system. I'll be honest, watching him last offseason, I didn't really love the swing, but uh, again, I want to go back and watch him now, see if there are some adjustment made either way. He is certainly getting the results at the moment. Keyshawn Ogans, 8 for 20, a home run, 8 RBI this past week. Ethan Workinger, he got off to a really slow start at high A after being really good at single A to start the year. He had a good week. He's 8 for 20 this past week with three doubles, eight runs batted in. So hopefully he can get going there at Rome. Geraldo Quintero, seven hits and five walks this past week, as, as long as, as well as three stolen bases. On the mound, Ian Mejia, seven hits, just or seven innings, just three hits, no walks, one earned, and eight strikeouts. Really good start. Daniel Martinez, five innings, three hits, no walks, one earned, and seven strikeouts. And then at Augusta, you got a lot of influx of 2023 MLB draft picks players coming to Augusta this past week. Uh, Jace Grady was three for 15, Cade Kern, four for 14. Cam McGee, three for 13 with a home run. Uh, on the mound, though, that's where all the attention really goes. Hurston Waldrop made his professional debut, went three innings, gave up one run on three hits and a walk, but struck out eight batters. That splitter was just carving people up. And that's what you would expect from somebody who was a really good pitcher at a high level like the SEC at college. You would expect them to go to Augusta and really you know, dominate and that's exactly what he did in his first start. Again, I don't know how many innings he'll get after already throwing 100 at Florida this year, but good to see him go out there using that splitter, dominating, getting some strikeouts. Lucas Braun, their sixth-round pick, he went three innings, didn't give up a, a run on two hits and no walks, but just one strikeout for him. Now, for the rest of the guys at Augusta, Corey Acton, six for 16, and four walks and five stolen bases. Uh, Gioma Diaz pitched in two games this past week, four and a third innings, three hits, two walks, one earned, but nine strikeouts. Really impressive stuff there. Luis Vargas on the mound, six and a third innings, two hits, three walks, no earned, and six strikeouts. And then Jason Franks, uh, draft pick from last year, two games, three innings, a hit, no walk, and five strikeouts. A couple of the other 2023 MLB draft picks, Sabine Sabalos, 
He had to have gotten hurt. Obviously, we don't get a lot of information on these minor league players, but he hasn't played since July 31st, and I got to figure he would have been part of that group moved up to Augusta if he were healthy as he was a high draft pick and I think one of the better bats from that draft that the Braves got. So, unfortunately, it sounds like – or looks like maybe he's dealing with an injury. Isaiah Drake, you know, high school player, a lot of upside, just one for nine this past week, a triple, a walk, and four strikeouts as he continues to struggle to get it going professionally. Will Verdung, two for 14 this past week, a double, uh, two walks, three strikeouts, and one stolen base at the complex level league where he and Drake are both are. So that's your Miners Monday update there. A lot of good stuff in there. Got some good bats. Lugbauer, McCabe showing a lot of power. Uh, Owen Murphy, Hurston Waldrop on the mound, showing some really good things as well. So great to see that going happening down on the farm. All right, next, Spencer Strider will be getting back on the mound for the Braves on Monday night, going up against the Pirates. So that'll be a lot of fun. We'll discuss that here next. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we face with tough we are faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. There's always stuff going on in our lives. Look, I got 3 kids right now. My stress stress level is out of the roof, but we all need that help. We need somebody to talk to. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MLB. Dylan Lee pitched a clean inning in his first rehab assignment. Like I said, I think it's going to be more of a lengthy rehab assignment for Dylan Lee unless there just suddenly is a need at the big league level. He's probably going to have three or four outings before the Braves recall him, where typically for relievers it may only take two outings for them to come back up. But uh, he had a clean outing, so that's good to see. On Monday night, Braves will start a four-game series against the Pirates. It'll be Spencer Strider versus uh osvaldo bido hopefully i'm saying that correctly apologize if not uh bido 27 right-handed pitcher just 33 innings this year 31 strikeouts a 5.18 era 1.52 whip he hasn't thrown more than 64 pitches in a game since july 5th so not sure how long he'll be able to go in this one hopefully not very long hopefully the braves will knock him around and for spencer strider go out and dominate this is an opportunity for him to go out dominate have that outing you know get through the seventh inning get in those double digits put up a, a one or fewer in the earned run column this is his opportunity something he's really been needing i mean he's been really good lately he's been dominant but he needs one of those seven inning one earned or less type of outings that we're honestly accustomed to seeing from spencer strider and he's had a lot of this year but hasn't really been able to kind of finish off these outings here lately there's been that home run there's been that one inning that he's just struggled to get through for whatever reason. I'd love to see him do that on this night. Braves need it after losing their last two games. And don't mess around in this one. You got Strider on the mound, and uh, like I said, an opportunity to go out and dominate. You got a pitcher on the mound who's probably not going to go long and somebody who hasn't been very good when he has pitched. Don't mess around in this one. Go out, dominate as you, sh as you should, but play better all around baseball. That's really what I'm watching for this team the rest of the way. Look, unless there's just a, a major collapse coming, and let's hope that doesn't happen because that would be hard to take. This team's going to be in the postseason. For here for the rest of the season, regular season rather, I'm looking at those little things. Do they clean up the base running? Can they clean up the defense? Do the pitchers clean up the walks? Those little things that I'm always looking at in a game that make a big difference, and it's the reason that the Cubs won this last series and the Braves didn't. The Cubs did all the little things right. They put the ball in play in big spots. They made the big plays when they need to. They made all the diving catches in the outfield. Man, to have outfielders who can come in, slide and catch a baseball and not allow those bloopers to get in, how huge is that? The Cubs probably did that four or five times over the weekend. I want to see the Braves start playing better baseball, more focused baseball. Hopefully that series against the Cubs kind of reawakens them into doing that. Uh, but that's really what I'm looking for in this series. Again, the Braves and Pirates begin a four-game series on Monday at 7.05 p.m. Eastern. Again, the Braves trying to look to get back on track with Spencer Strider on the mound. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. 
That will do it for this episode of Lockdown Braves. Thanks so much for making us your first listen of each and every a day. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.